Hi, my name's Ian from Las Vegas Scooters and Lifts. This is my workshop. Today I want to talk about uh, transaxles, how they work, what could go wrong with them, how you could maybe fix them. Yeah. Okay, what I've got for you here today are transaxles from a GoGo, -Go, Pride Mobility GoGo. -Go. These are the most sort of common things I work on. But I do work on Drive, Golden, and all other sorts of mobility scooters. So they're all pretty much the same, same makeup. We have a brake, which is that thing, your motor, which is that thing and your transaxle, which is this thing. So I've done it down in stages, brake, motor, transaxle, transaxle and motor, motor, transaxle and brake. So that's what it looks like fully assembled. There is one more wire to go on there, which is your brake wiring. But there's no need for that. That's your four pin connector that goes into the back of the scooter. On a drive and golden, I believe they're like fingers and a, like a receptacle that they slot in kind of finger together it's not very good design but I prefer these these are a lot quicker and easier but let's uh, get on to the breakdown of each part so this is your brake your brake consists of a little collar there that does all the braking for you it's electromagnetic regenerating electromagnetic so that's your the handle that you would operate the freewheel and uh, drive when it's in drive that collar locks into position and when you press the throttle it releases the electromagnetic brake the electromagnetic uh, current then releases that brake and basically puts it into freewheel to allow the motor to spin and um, when you put let go of the throttle it would then re-energize and lock it in place to stop you rolling away so it's all automatic but when the power's off and you put it in freewheel you can freely push the scooter which you probably already know but if you push it too fast then it will regenerate and relock that together to stop you rolling away but over a period of time about 30 seconds or so it'll then release again you hear it click so you can push the scooter so usually if you're trying to push it too fast or if you're on an incline or a decline and the scooter starts to roll away from you it'll then lock into place and stop you from rolling but it will release again on the top there you have your micro switch and that basically detects whether it's in the open or locked position and that's in its locked position the little button there is popped out and when it's in freewheel it'll tell the scooter that it's in freewheel if the power's on it'll tell the scooter there's a brake release error and it'll send a five beep code on most scooters it's five beeps or five flashes and uh, on the newer ones a new model of uh, go go's that we've just got in it actually does a three beep and then two beep still giving you the five beeps but it's three pause two and a lot of the drives do that they do a three flash and a two flash still meaning five beeps or five flashes to indicate there's a brake error now it could be either mic switch or the brake itself or it's just the free wheel lever in in the neutral position meaning that you can't drive it it shuts the scooter drive capability down these mic switches do break over time you can replace these i'm sure if you find a good uh, electrical outlet that you could uh, outlet store you could probably replace that with the or even on eBay or Amazon or wherever you can replace those but just make sure that 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 holds if there's any because these do wear over time and if it's in the lock position and that still spins then it's time for a new break you can adjust these by tightening them but I wouldn't recommend it because you've got to do it exactly right so it's flush and they also do put thread locker on it to lock it in place but 
they don't sell these brakes on their own there may be one online source that you could buy the brake alone for but if it's worn to the point that it's loose then you probably might as well either buy another scooter because uh, you probably worn transaxle and motor it's uh, it's, it's, up, it's up to you it's your scooter I just recommend if anything happens to this this portion of the scooter if it's an older scooter and it's got a lot of wear and tear on it it's not worth replacing for the price of what they're charging us and you the customer for replacing this this item so that's your brake um, but I might as well show you how you can test the brake see if you do have a brake failure I'll just move these out of the way so to test your brake two ways of doing it to see if your micro switch is broken or your brake is broken because these do get exposed to water sometimes and on the newer scooters they put a plastic cover over there now so that covers this to stop any water getting in there but it still can still can get water ingress in there and uh, that kills these brakes so don't wash your scooter don't hose it down with anything because otherwise it will just destroy these brakes and you're looking at a new motor and brake because they don't sell the brakes on their own but what I do to test the mic switch put it in uh, audible see if we've got resistance so it'll beep and test the both wires and test it again see if the mic switch is broken it should should be there it goes so it beeps on a closed circuit and if it's an open circuit which that is it shouldn't beep which it isn't doing so that that mic switch is fine that's telling the the brain of the scooter that it's open or it's closed sorry so you've got continuity between those wires made a circuit and the way you test to see if your brakes any good you put your testers in there and it should read when it's in the closed loop position get to read 61.7 so it should be reading around about 59 to 60 60 ohms so you put it in an ohm reading and it should give you an ohm reading saying that yes you have a circuit so the micro switch is working and also the brake is working if it's in the unlocked position that circuit is then broken and it should give an open circuit which it is doing so you would test it put it in the lock position test those two connectors there and you should have a reading on on your multimeter and that means the brakes good so if it reads zero on the lock position your brakes done it's no good doesn't matter if you change that mic switch or not it's still done it's no good so that's your brake held on with four four screws there allen head screws and it's a weird size I think it's nine sixty fourths. It's a weird, weird number. But they use millimeters on everything else, but uh, on the brake it's nine sixty fourths. They may change that over time, but what I tend to find it's usually nine. I think it's nine sixty fourths. You just got to be careful when removing any brake that you don't damage any of the wiring because they're infinite wisdom. They. They put it right next to the wiring one two three four and that basically releases the brake if you want to change your brake out or clean it out or just look at it if you want to but that's your brake your brake attaches to this portion of the motor and it has that hexagonal connector there which is held in also with allen i call them grub screws in in the uk we call them the grub screw not sure what they call them in the US but 
and that you can take that off if that gets damaged you can replace it or adjust it you can see it's a little bit loose so that would be wanting to be tightened up not sure what size I'll test it now let's see I'm guessing a two yeah, two millimeter grip screw just tighten that up just make sure it's not slopping around so two millimeter millimeter Allen but 964 to hold the brake in go figure okay so your motor two wires your positive and negative and all the computer of the brain of the scooter does is to go in reverse it just swaps swaps the polarity over so it goes backwards and forwards so that's all that all that does to hold the motor onto the transaxle which goes into this portion of just three screws allen heads again these are four millimeter allen as well as the four mil millimeter that hold the top and the bottom of portion of the transaxle together there's also a gasket in between there they don't sell this part they don't sell the gasket so you break it you're done it's uh, gonna start leaking grease because inside of these transaxles they're all packed with grease and uh, it's a messy job but i'll show you just in case you think you want to have a go at it if the uh, money's tight and you you want to re replace something or you're finding it's making a funny noise because there are replaceable parts in there mainly the bearings only not so much these bearings as uh, three sets of bearings inside of the transaxle one at this end I think there may be two sets of one one there and then another set of bearings there and what they look like this is one that I've taken off the shaft it's like a finger long finger bearing that just basically makes the shaft run smooth so if you get any movement up and down from there like that then you know these bearings have worn or broken or come apart there's also a rubber seal either side it does have a, a metal like uh, washer inside of that rubber to keep it tight against the aluminum here on both all sets of bearings they have a rubber washer one there one there one there and one just there just to keep the the grease from escaping and and stop any uh, garbage getting in there because nine times out of ten when I get a scooter in there's usually hair build up as you can see on this one a little bit of hair but it's also it pulls the grease out of the transaxle which is you know, see if you can see that as you can see it's got grease coming out of it there not nice so that's your bearing set up for your transaxle and I say it's just three bolts to hold the motor on there and that is like that so you have your big collar there for your brake and then this portion goes into your transaxle top piece okay glove change so the motors it comes in various shapes and sizes these are the go-go ones and you have your positive and negative lead there like i said the brake goes that side and your drive to the transaxle goes that side there's a little keyway that slots into there and that uh, locks into the transaxle just there you can see just there so they make together i always take these transaxles off of the frames when i'm working on them it just makes life a lot easier you can get around them easier I don't do them often but I just find that the easy way to do it so and what I do is there's four bolts that hold it onto the frame plus four bolts that hold the these power connectors onto the rear of the frame as well where it connects together these are six millimeter allen and these are 13 millimeter nuts you just basically loosen the nuts off and then it should pull straight away and like I say you need to remove that and that takes that frame away just kind of remember the orientation of the frame 
and what I do is remove the wheels as well I always use one wheel put it on the desk there just makes it nice and stable and that holds that in place without me having to struggle with it so the motor is attached there there's varying different motors like I said this one's a, a drive drive for uh, Devilbus if that's the way they say the name but drive medical and this is their motor it's also used it's a very similar one very much the same shape probably the same manufacturer that they're using the golden buzz arounds and also the light rider which I think is a, a weak motor transaxle for that scooter but that's what they want to use so very similar just one's a little bit longer these don't you can't retrofit these to them motor is different the connections are different they use a, a plastic bung sort of thing there that drives similar there inside of the motor is your actual uh, your windings and uh, that's your your copper conductor where your your two bushes sit there and that passes the the voltage through there and that's what spins the motor as you can see on this one it's actually very worn it's very much like your brake rotors or your brake discs where the pads just start digging into the rotors and they create this lip and that causes like a short problem it'll just start arcing across instead of making a good contact like from that's what it should be to that's what it is and that'll give you motor issues it also creates a lot of dust and it gets inside the windings which you can see better on this one where the the dust is just building up and building up and it gets inside there's two bearings one on either end of the motor like that and that and these bearings get clogged up with this dust over time and they can make noise or even just lock up completely causing resistance on the motor and it would work hard to get hotter and give you drive issues drive for uh, drive time issue as, as the length of the scooter will start reducing because this is working harder pulling battery power and your your range will go down so i don't recommend doing anything with the motors don't bother taking them apart and i mean you could but to replace these but these are pretty well tight on so i don't recommend doing it and also this dust is very carcinogenic it it makes you cough if it gets anywhere if you try cleaning it i tried it it's just absolutely disgusting it's not worth your health you might as well just change the change the motor out for a new one if that's your your problem and so with the pride go goes your lx your ultra x your traveler and even the travel pro it's very this motor setup is all the same there's that little keyway that slots into that black plastic thing there and what I do is put the transaxle this way up and don't put the keyway in this end of the motor put it in the transaxle because otherwise it's just going to keep falling out so I put it in there if you want to reassemble one of these a little fiddly especially with these gloves on try and get it centered as best you can and then offer the motor up and on the back of back of the motor you've got three three screw holes there four millimeters same as these allen heads and then just offer your your motor up try and align that as best you can but it will wiggle into place eventually there it goes so once that's in place make sure that those screw holes are correct and that way you've got your motor aligned correctly and then just put your screws in at least get one in to offer it up so it holds it in place and that way you can then tip it on its side if the motor's not going to fall over and fall out you can then tighten those up put it in place and then attach your brake afterwards but that's that's the basic motor with the keyway keep that over there safe i don't need that anymore so your transaxle is your next thing so these transaxles have three bearings one at either end and one in the center for the drive shaft the newer transaxles have a cover over there you know, it's like a solid cover seems to be a, be a better transaxle than this first version it's probably first or second version but uh, these should turn freely 
like it is doing like that that's like a freewheel so freewheeling the scooter and if it isn't freewheeling then you may have some kind of problem inside of there and inside of there is a series of a planetary gear and two drive gears plus a gear that drives the the main planetary gear there which is this thing here it has a washer uh, has a bearing at the top a bearing at the bottom and that runs that's basically what that looks like there that's where that keyway goes into and drives the main planetary gear there and that drives the two drive gears for either side so, and these can these can blow out and I've seen a video on YouTube where this this one is actually destroyed and got caught inside of the gear and makes an awful noise so yeah you can change these if that is your problem these do do come off but you will have to uh, use a vise or a drill press to squish those uh, bearings back in place but make sure they're, they're on tight all the way down and there's a bigger bearing which is that one the black you can see around there is your, your bigger bearing so if you have a noisy transaxle it could be that so check that out and that's the planetary gear motor drive and then inside of there is like i said the planetary and the other gears which i'll show you that i've got let's see this one that i've stripped down and cleaned i've actually took all the grease out of it but i will open this one out as well just to show how messy it is and what uh, you need to look for because inside of there there are some washers that have to be spaced out correctly and uh, they can wear and this is what's happened to this one as you can see grease is coming out of there as well if you can see that but uh, the way i check these for when a customer comes in and they have problems with the scooter or the drive range if it's not batteries then i i then start looking at the transaxle motor and brake just make sure there's nothing untoward going on with that and because uh, this one is quite quite stiff but it's not too bad but what i look for is any lateral movement left and right in this transaxle and that would acquaint to wearing of the washers that space out the planet the the gearing to the planetary so anything like that i don't know if you can see it it's moving left and right it shouldn't do that it should be tight it should be at least a couple of mil maybe no more than a quarter of an eighth of an inch i have to try and think about the difference between eighth and m millimeters but oh, two millimeters is that is pretty excessive it's uh, a bit too much and that would say to me that that's starting to wear or has worn especially this side it's it's like three four millimeters there so it's, it's a good way of checking to see if there's any wear and tear to the transaxle and uh, so then i would start investigating inside of there but most of the time i, I pretty much know it's it's toast it's done time for a new transaxle which most of the time i wouldn't advise a customer to change it the the price of these are just not worth replacing unless it's under warranty then yeah i wouldn't recommend it i don't do it i don't do it on mine they just go for parts i just use the motor and the brake if i need to but nine times out of ten as you can see the toast another leak point on these transaxles and also power wheelchairs is this seal here where the top and the bottom that's your top piece and that's your bottom piece they have a gasket in there and sometimes it, these break down they shouldn't but sometimes they do break down and start leaking out the uh, the grease that's put inside of there if it doesn't leak out of there it'll leak out of there and you'll see grease start to to leak out and people have said oh i've got oil on my floor and it's basically because that that's broken down it's it's done for they don't sell those that's what it kind of looks like that's the gasket they don't sell these this is one i've retrieved off an older scooter just to show you 
And nine times out of ten, when you split these apart, these break apart, and it's end end of story. New tracks like so, because you can't you can't change that. Okay, so transaxle. I always put the wheel not that way round, put it that way around. That's how it goes basically on the on the cart, on the on the scooter. Yeah, I always do it that way. Plus this facing up so I can get these off. I also use when I take one of these apart a clamp to clamp that in position there. I'll just tighten this up and clamp it in, but I'll get to that in a minute. Four millimeter, one, two, three, four, five, six of them. You've already taken your motor off, and that also holds it in. Seven, eight. There's two long ones also hold it into place there, which hold the motor in. But I recommend taking the motor off. Okay, so this is your four millimeter. Okay, so with those taken out, they do put uh, Loctite on these as well, which I recommend you do the same. Now this probably won't come apart, may do, oh yep yeah, this one is, but if it doesn't, what you use, just get a little, get a hammer and give it a little tap, not too much, but just enough to break it loose. And try and keep that gasket from breaking. There it goes. Okay. So with that broken loose, if you can see it, yep. Let's move this out of the way. Because this is going to get messy. And this is why I say I don't recommend doing this. Okay. Stuff that up there for now. So. Now the grease is going to hold everything together, but once you've got that separated, I flip it over, like so just, you can leave one screw in there just to hold it together once you broke it apart. I use this clamp, like I said, just to stop that from sliding down, and then just tighten that up, so we don't get any slippage it's going to want to slide down the shaft so we can snap that in place snap it there we go okay so that's then holding that in place and then you can remove the main portion the top part that comes away like I say it's full of grease so if you want to do this, be my guest. So that's your top housing, bottom housing. There's the drive that I showed you. And then, uh, so there's inside of where this portion goes in there. You can see in there is a little spring washer, which looks like so. So that just that goes and fits on there just to spring load that a little bit. So that's the one washer. And there's your, your drive. Sometimes these wiggle out, but most of the time you have to pop them out using a bit of force. But sometimes, it, there it goes. So that, that's basically that piece. We have a bearing on that end. Also bearing on that and that should be nice and smooth, not binding. This one's binding a little bit, but I may clean that. It's just where the grease builds up, especially when the grease gets old and it starts getting inside of there. But that's your planetary drive. So this is your planetary gear, and these are your two inner drive uh, 
cogs these planetary gear and the two drive gears there and there they can, they can just lift that no I can't see it okay see the bottom one they run on that bottom one to drive that cog there and also on that one there so there's no washer uh, uh, there it is this is what I find all the time I'm going to clean this up and show you this is where you don't want to do this job there is a spacer washer that's just been chewed up I'm going to clean that okay. I'll clean this up as best I can but just to give you an idea what's going on so that once was a washer and that will give you that, that movement there because there's no spacing and that should push that out that spacer of that washer should push it out create that seal and also stop that left and right movement there like so so on to this end move this out of the way i'll just get another wheel there's another wheel just to pop that in place you can see so this is one of your drive gears they're actually all the same there's no size difference and they all have that notch in it just there which corresponds to this little peg that's in there and that's what puts the drive to the uh, to the shaft i'm just checking to see if there's any more broken bits in there no it's just grease uh, see why i wear gloves uh, that's the drive so the way you can compensate for that movement left and right is one put a uh, a washer you have to remove that pin you should just slide out that's what the pin looks like just put a washer if you can find one that has that diameter of hole in there most washers don't they have the smaller diameter but if you happen to find one then good for you and then you've got to find the right thickness of washer to space it out correctly and uh, nine times out of ten i can never find anything and then it's pretty much toast for the scooter there's more metal work there and if these do break down they can get trapped in the planetary gear in the main drive gears and they'll just lock your scooter up because of these little little things just ball up and make a mess and what I'm gonna do is remove that pin like I said I'm going to I've got I happen to have one a washer that I am going to put on there just to space that out a little bit and give this transaxle another lease of life put the pin back in and then the planetary gear no the uh, drive gear and hopefully that's going to be enough to oh, more metal yep more metal god that sucks It just it just eats them just eats it alive okay so if i didn't have this clamp on here that thing would be sliding up and down and just getting on my nerves i'm gonna clean my gloves and i'm gonna put it all back together okay so with that new washer in there hopefully that should space that out i'm just gonna clean this end up see how that looks make sure it's not too bad uh, Yeah. 
like it pulled a little bit of grease out through there, but it looked pretty well sealed. Yeah. I'm happy with that. Now, once I've brought that back together, I'll give it a better clean. Pull that back together. So, put that there for now. Put that there. Put this drive shaft back in. Again, being careful with the gasket not to break that. There we go. It slots into there. And like I said, there's that little spring washer in there. And slowly bring that down. sits on there. Looks a lot better. And I'll pop just a couple of screws to hold it in. Okay, that's all back together now. Brakes on, motors together, it's all cleaned up. Looks a lot better. And I'll quickly test it, just to make sure it spins without making any noise. It's uh, pretty free. Let's get the right way around. Yep, nice and quiet. Spins evenly. Try reverse. Yep, no problems there. Bearings are running nicely, no noises. But, uh, yeah, if you do that, just make sure the brake's in free wheel. Otherwise, it'll bind up. But, yeah, that's fine. Brake's not loose. I will replace these rubber bushings at some point when it goes inside a, a scooter if it needs to. But at the moment, I'm not going to bother. But that's it, that's how you disassemble, reassemble, evaluate a uh, go-go transaxle. I hope you find this interesting, I hope it's helpful in some way. And uh, if you've got any questions, put them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them, either me or Jenny. But uh, yeah, hope you find it interesting. Thank you for watching, bye.